Hello viewers, uh, today we are going to see the introduction of engineering mechanics. So what is the significance and importance of engineering mechanics and uh, we are going to see the classifications under that. So before that, uh, what is the need of mechanics or the study of mechanics it is required for a specifically component. So in the new product design and development, so there are certain stages. So under that, there will be uh, analysis for the structural loads. So it starts from the need and requirement of a product and after that the specification of the product will be uh, confined. Later the detailed diagram which is required for the manufacturing component which has to be limited or uh, um, finalized with respect to the engineering analysis for a specific component. So under that, under the engineering analysis so there is a need of load cases. So under the load cases, there are different kinds of structural loads, uh, thermal loads and then based on the vibrational analysis, there are according to the applications, there will be certain load cases and analysis. So as per the, the sequence it will go. So under the structural loads, so we need to know what actually, what actually a structural load and what are the forms of structural load and with respect to that, the mechanics is connected. So coming to the so topic so we are today we are going to see the basics of engineering mechanics so engineering mechanics it is nothing but it is a branch of physics it study studies the effect of force system which acting on a specific component so uh, in in two aspects it it, it may be categorized, categorized as particles and rigid bodies so the mechanics basically is classified as rigid bodies and deformable bodies the object which you are considering or assumed to be not getting deformed so that was named as rigid bodies. The rigid body under that you will be having two states statics and dynamics. And the next category the object which you are considering to get deformed it is uh, considered as deformable bodies and for that there are further, further classifications. So under the first category and the rigid body so basically the state is considered as statics and dynamics. So we know that a static it is the system which is kept at rest or uh, in some uniform motion it can be named as statics and the opposite case the system which is in motion it is called as dynamic state under that it will be you will be having two kind of studies so if you are considering the forces which will which, which it is causing that motion or state so that is considered as kinematic kinetics and then in kinematics if you are not considering the uh, resource which is causing that motion so and deformable bodies Again, it is further classified into strength of materials, elasticity and plasticity. So, this is the broad classification and uh, once, if you want to get the insight of engineering mechanics, we should know what actually a force. We hope you, hope you all know that force, it is nothing but it is an external agency, it comes in the form of push or pull. So, because of which the system it may get in its motion, that is the change of uh, uh, it tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion whenever this sectional agency charge over a system. So that is nothing but it's a force. So the force whenever if you, are, if you want to represent the force, it, it has a certain parameters or attributes. The attributes can be categorized into four major levels. The first one, if you are considering a force of 10 newton is acting from a point or it is getting exerted from a point under that, the force it is supposed to represent with four attributes. The first one it is the point of application. So the where the force it is getting exerted, that point it is called as point of application and the force it will be traveling in a line and if you are tracing that line, that line it is called as line of action and then the force it will be having certain level of uh, magnitude. That magnitude we are representing in terms of numerical values that is called as and then magnitude and then uh, force it is a vector being a vector quantity it has both uh, magnitude and direction so the direction which was represented for a force it is called as sense so these are the major uh, things which we need to, we want to represent do, during the system and then the force the system force system again can be classified with respect to the orientation of the forces the force system can be classified as coplanar forces and non coplanar forces we know that the coplanar plane it is nothing but the negligible that is a, it's like a surface the surface it has negligible thickness that that the object can be considered as coplanar uh, plane and then if the forces 
if you are considering those forces which is acting in a single plane, those kind of system it is called as coplanar forces. And the forces which is not not only concentrated in a single plane, the forces which you are considering it is getting acted in different planes. In those kind of system it is called as non-coplanar forces. In coplanar again there are some consistencies with respect to the orientation of the forces. If the force the the forces which is acting in a single plane. The point of application for all the forces it seems to be constant means that kind of force system it is called as coplanar concurrent force system. And there will be some additional accepted cases. If it is not having the common point of application for the forces which is acting in a single plane, that can be called as parallel system. And the parallel it won't for the parallel force system it won't be having the common point of application for the forces. Instead, it will be having separately for individual forces. And if it is all the forces is acting towards one direction, it is called as like parallel forces. And then if it is uh, uh, not in the same direction, the system it can be named as uh, coplanar parallel unlike force system. As like that, there will be some certain cases we could expect in the form of non-concurrent coplanar, non-concurrent and non-parallel force systems. And the next category it is non-coplanar. This is the total forces which is acting in the system. It will be separator or segregator in different planes so it is called as non-coplanar system so thanks for watching